moving on to yourself, you've taken a bit of a year off from the professional scene of darts. You've been on the exhibition circuit, obviously, you've been in the commentary brief plenty. Yeah. What have you learned from this year, and is there anything that you're going to take into your professional career from the commentary brief or even just exhibition matches? Well, exhibitions have been fun this year. I've done a lot on my own, and I've done a lot with other people as well. I particularly like the trip to Bahrain with Chris Mason and Terry Jenkins because we got to learn a bit more about where uh, dart is in the Middle East. Now, Bahrain have always had a, a vibrant dart scene, albeit quite small, but they're very keen to embrace coaching and try to improve technique and see what they have to do to take the next step, which is great. But constantly working in Scotland, I mean, how could you not enjoy that? I, I get a chance to go up and see my friends in Aberdeen, in Venes, um, places like Alloa, which is a real you know, stalwart of a town when it comes to exhibitions. But I think what I've learned is not to take myself too seriously, because if there was any criticism that I got from you know, my peers, you know, James Weir always said that I was a bit too regimental and he was absolutely right. Um, I got that from other uh, quarters as well and it, it fell on deaf ears for many years. I just wanted to be the asset and I forgot about who Paul Nicholson is. And what I'm trying to find at the minute is a nice little happy medium. And going into Q school, I don't feel any pressure whatsoever. I think it's firmly on everybody else. And if I get through, great. If I don't, it's not the end of the world. In the words of John O'Shea this week when he lost his match, Nobody died. So that's the way I'm going to approach it. And I'm going to enjoy Q School because the last time I went there, it was tough. It was really hard work. And I feel fit. Do I feel ready practice wise? Probably not. But the thing is, I've got two days to get ready after the O2's finished. Put in a few hours and I'll, I'll give it a good go. I'm really looking forward to it. You say you want to be Paul Nicholson again. Is that the end of the CM Punk references and the end of the shades, Paul? Well, not for a lot of people on social media. And the fact that it isn't forgotten just goes to show how much traction it got at the time. But for me, it was fun at the time. There's still always going to be that element inside me of, you know, the, the wrestling and the walk-ons. Because that's the fun element of the game. I, lo I love doing that kind of thing. And I always wanted to be different. But at the same time, you have to move on and you have to evolve as a lot of these young players will understand. And if you look at someone like Phil Taylor, for instance, he wasn't the same from day one all the way through to the end of his career in 2018. Uh, there was an uh, evolution of equipment, evolution of what he wore, what training he did, the amount of practice he did, what persona he was trying to give to the media, that kind of stuff. You have to evolve. Um, the next phase of my career, I don't know what it is yet, whether it's predominantly media or predominantly playing. We'll have to wait and see, but I'm not going to be one of those players in 2020 who says if I don't get through Q School, I'm going to definitively retire because I want it to be left a little bit open over the next few years until I absolutely know that I don't want to play competitively anymore. I'm going to leave everything open, but Q School for me, there's pointless making plans until that's completed.